if it says he laid hands on them, it might not say how he did it. But if it says, if it describes how he laid hands, it never says, and Jesus laid his hands on their head. It always says he took them by the hand. Right. Hence, if you watch how I minister to people, or many of you I've already prayed for, if you notice whenever I prayed for you, I did not lay my hands on your head. I took you by the hand. Right hand, both hands, doesn't matter. I figure if right hand's good, two hands are better, twice as much, <laughs> right? I call these my jumper cables. <laughs> right there, they get you, right? <clears throat> so, and people say, well, why don't you lay hands on people's head? Because most of you are taller than me. <laughs> and after a couple of hours of doing this, when I go home that night and I wake up the next morning, I'm like, hey, oh. Why? Because I've been standing like this all night. So I thought, don't need to do that. I can do this. Amen. And I'm relaxed, and it's easy, right? You'll also notice when I start to minister to you, if many times, which is what happened, if we're close and this is your hand, then you'll stick your hands out, I'll take your hands, and if we're too close, which means, how do I know if I'm too close? If my arms are bent, we're too close, right? I really don't like if your arms are bent, but it's not as big a deal. So if my arms are bent, I will take your hand and I will step back. Why? I'm making my arms straight. And this sounds, I, I did not understand this, but I tested it and proved it. And when I prayed for people like this, I had to pray longer. When I started praying like this, I could pray shorter and get, the, and get better results. Why? Because rivers, what is rivers made out of? Water. Rivers of living water shall flow out of your belly, out of your spirit, right? And as they flow out, now, if they're just flowing out, they can just flow out. But if we're directing it, we have to direct it. How do you direct it? It flows out, and you direct it by contacting something, and that's where it flows. Now, if you take a water hose and turn it on, full flow. The more you bend that water hose, the less comes out and the longer it takes. I know it made no sense to me. I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't. You know what I mean? But I tested it. And the Spirit of God flows easier when my arms are straight. As a matter of fact, you can also train yourself. And the Holy Spirit, He's just like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do it. Right? And so you can be, I can be like this. I can stand like this for about 15 seconds. And He'll start flowing. Even if there's nobody there to flow into. Why? Because as far as he's concerned, it's like, let's go. Well, I mean, he's ready. Amen? And so I've learned when I do that, I can, I, can, I can tell. I can tell when it starts, and I can tell when it's done. When you've got enough, I can tell. It's like, it, it's like turn off the faucet up here, and the last of the water drains out the hose. And whenever it drains out, it's done. And most of the time, you'll hear me say, oh, there it is, right there. There it is. And then I'll turn and go to the next person. Why? Because I let it flow. Now, in the beginning, now get this, okay? We grow. I know it's getting late. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, okay, amen, thank you. Well, okay, yeah, five minutes, five minutes. There. <laughs> yeah. So, um, when I first started, I wasn't praying for a lot of people. And I told God in the beginning, because I'd been reading a lot of, you know, Kenyan and that kind of stuff about faith and different things, and, and it was good stuff, and it helped a lot. And so I'm reading it, and I started realizing, you know, and he kept saying, uh, the more feelings, the less faith, the more faith, the less feelings, and you know, don't go for feelings, and, which is all true. It's all good stuff. And so I'm looking at that, and so I just made a, I just told God, God, I want pure faith. If that means never feeling anything, I'm good with that. Just get the people healed. That's all that counts. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what I don't feel. I don't care about feeling faith. I want pure faith because faith pleases you. Faith honors you. I want to please you. So pure faith. As pure as we can get it, let's keep it there. So, okay. And I was praying for, you know, two, three people at a time. They come to my house one at a time. They come out, and sometimes in a church, I might pray for three, four, five people at the most. And the good part of it is that I could stay there a while. If they're in my house, I can, you know, there were people I prayed for for 45 minutes. And, and then I'd talk to them a little bit and then pray again for another 30 minutes. And we would do that, and it was long. But how many of you know, whenever you're, uh, you know, in Ukraine, and you've got 3,000 people sitting there in a healing service, you can't spend 45 minutes with each person. So I remember the first time I started ministering and all of a sudden I felt something flowing. I'm like, it was strange to me because I had not felt anything before. And I remember thinking, what is that? Because I'm thinking, God, I don't need that. I, I trust you. I don't need to feel. I want pure faith. I don't want to feel anything. I, I actually 
argued against it because I, I wanted faith. I didn't want feeling. And I said, what is this? And he said, you can't stand there long enough to do this. And he said, so I want you to feel it so you'll know how quick you can move. So the larger the crowds got, the more I started feeling. But he knew I didn't need to feel it for me to have faith that it was happening. But he let me feel it so I knew when I was done so I could go to the next person. And when you first start, you might only be praying for one or two people, one, one person a day, three people a day, separate times. You may not need to feel a thing. But if you have crowds, you might have to start feeling things to be able to know to go on. Now, the key is not caring either way and letting God do it. 